Hi, Jason with Tormac. We got another fun project for you guys today. Um, it's the Easter season, kids are on spring break, so we're trying to come up with a fun idea um, for something to make. Um, so speaking with our engineering director, and he had this pretty fun idea to make a two-piece Easter egg. So we grabbed a bar of 17-4 stainless steel, and we, um, we machined one up. So let's walk through this project, and uh, we'll show you guys how we did it, what fixturing we used, the problems we ran into, and um, all the fun little details along the way. So make this thing. All right, so let's jump into this thing. Um, you can see here, we started out this project, we just used some aluminum soft dogs, we just bored them out to the diameter of the stock, which is about a two and a quarter inch. Um, and as we mentioned, this was a 17-4 stainless, so we're hanging on to about an inch of the part here, just in some soft jaws. We come in here, we do some roughing on the facing, so we're just doing some facing. We're running everything at right around 315 surface footage. Um, and with a 5,000 for revolution feed rate. So we do a little bit of facing, we do some OD roughing here for the thread, the male thread portion of the part. Um, and again, this is 315 surface footage at 5,000 per revolution. We could have definitely gone a little faster with this, but it was you know just a small amount of roughing here, so I just it was running nice, so I just kind of let it run and finish up. That we grabbed the parting tool, which is just a GTN2, an uh, eighth inch wide grooving tool, and we just cut that thread relief. Um, we ran this at the same, about 300 surface footage, and this was, I think, three thousandths per revolution on this tool. Um, after that, we grabbed our OD threading tool and uh, went ahead and cut the thread. This is a M44 by 1.5 thread. So we went ahead and cut this all just single point. I didn't have a thread gauge or anything, so I kind of just cut the first side with the plan of fitting the second side to it. Then we went ahead and drilled out the center hole here to get some clearance for the boring bar. So this is a 5 8 inch diameter insert drill. Uh, we ran this about 750 RPM at 3 thou and 2 tenths per revolution. Um, I had initially started out quite a bit faster with this. I started this at 1500 RPM but it, it just didn't sound good. It just didn't like the RPM. It was chattery, it just didn't, it wasn't happy so we slowed it down. Um, ended up running that at 750 at 3,000 per rev. Then we come back with a boring bar. This is just a half inch diameter boring bar with a, um, a C style insert, so it's a CC insert on there. We definitely had a little bit of issues with this. This is always one of those steps of the process that makes you a little nervous. As you can see here, we piled up a whole bunch of chips. We had trouble breaking the chip on this part. So we started out at that 315 surface footage at 5,000 per revolution. It was a 50,000 step to cut. Um, we just couldn't get the chip to break. So we kind of just got through the first part here, then I went ahead and reprogrammed it. And um, what ended up resolving the issue for us was I increased the chip load. I increased it to 8,000 per revolution and then it was breaking the chips nicely and able to out the big bird's nest coming off at the end of the tool. You know, when you're, when you're sticking a boring bar into a hole and you have chip problems like that, you end up you know, you really shorten the insert life. You can, you really start beating the inserts up when you recut all those chips. So um, it took us a couple to get it dialed in, but we were able to get it cutting nicely at that 8,000th per revolution. So here you can see we're onto the bottom side of the part. So we go ahead, this part doesn't have any OD work. We just face it off. Then we come back with the drill again and the boring bar. And we used all the same settings here, the 750 RPM at 3,000 per rev, and then the, the boring bar at the 8,000s for rev on roughing. I lightened up the depth of cut a little on this side just to see if it would help break the chip. So I think we ended up at a 40,000 step to cut at that 8,000 per revolution. And it, uh, it broke the chips pretty nicely. and was able to just let it run the whole part without worrying about it. So let me come back, we do the ID threading. This is just a three quarter inch diameter ID bar. Um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, this is a M44 by 1.5 thread. We were cutting this at 500 RPM. Um, and we did have to run this right up to, there's an internal shoulder, and we did run this right up to the shoulder. So I tweaked the depth in as I went just to get it to just barely kiss that shoulder to make sure I got that thread as deep as I could get it. Then I just came back and tried to fit the thread. 
This is a little bit of a learning moment for us here. You can see that, you can see I'm struggling to turn that. Um, what actually ended up happening was the thread got stuck. Stainless steel galls really easy when you have a threaded components. And when the thread was a little bit too tight, it threaded on pretty smooth. It did feel a little tight, but it threaded on nicely. As you can see here in, in the footage, um, those parts are still together. I was unable to get them apart. So I ended up just switching components here and uh, I had to scrap that component out. So you can hear it's just more footage of the ID threading on the next component. Um, and then we were able to fit the thread to this and just get it all dialed in and the thread fitting real nice. You can hear a little bit of chatter in the thread when it's cutting. Stainless kind of, it kind of makes that noise. In my experience, in all the components we used to make, um, it was always difficult to get stainless steel ID threads or any threads really to, to look really nice. It, Here we move on to, we're finishing the OD, so this is on the OP2 on the top side of the egg. Um, you can see the male portion of the thread here. So what we did for this was we turned some more, another set of soft jaws down to ID chuck this part. On the inside of the part, I just designed it to have um, a straight bore, and I made them the same on both sides of the egg so that I could hold both sides on the same set of jaws. So on the, on the top side here that we're cutting right now, I was able to cut this pretty aggressively. I didn't want to go too much and, and risk damaging or spinning the part on the jaw, so I took it pretty easy. You know, we're just making a one-off kind of component here, so I wasn't really pushing on it to see what I could get it to do on speed-wise, but we were taking this off at about 50 thou depth of cut and um, 5 thousandths for revolution. Then at the end of this video here, we'll, we'll show you all the different ways we finished the part. I kind of played around with the finishing speeds to um, just kind of experiment a little to see what it would look like at different feed rates on a finished pass. You see this, this cut real nice. We just went ahead and turned this OD down and then we came back with a single finished pass. I was a little worried about the fit on this because I can't, um, you know, it's a very difficult part to measure. There's nothing to measure on a curved surface. so fitting the two eggs together so that the blend on the two when they're threaded together was real nice and even. Um, you know, that was a little bit of a challenge. We just had to make sure that we really had the jaws and everything cut nice and the parts running concentric. So when we threaded it all together, everything lines up nicely. Here we move on to the bottom side of the egg. So we're doing the same op two. We use the same jaws. Um, for this op, I ended up lightening up the depth of cut because I'm only hanging on to um, about a hundred thousandths of that inside of the part, so I'm really not clamped on a lot of this component. Um, so you can see here, we took about a 30 thou depth of cut at that 5 thousandths per, per revolution again. Um, same surface footage as, as we've been running at 315. Um, but this ran a little slower, but it, it, we didn't slip any of the parts on the jaws and we were able to get them all done. So you can see here, uh, once that cleaned up, um, I ended up, I ended up changing insert. I wore an insert out, so I, I swapped inserts and I had to kind of resize and refit my part. So I was just measuring how much of a burr I had left to kind of get an idea how much I had to push it back to uh, get everything to the proper size. You know, as I mentioned, this is a, it's an egg, so there's really nothing to measure. So you can see we got these things, it's two pieces, um, M44 thread, they thread together, they fit real nice, they blend up real good. Um, you know, it's a, it was a fun little project, the things turned out really nice. Um, I wish I could have made 50 of them because everybody in the company wanted to take one home. <laughs> um, here you can see the, the different surface finishes we had. I finished one of these at a 15 thousandths per revolution. Um, you can see the, the finish on this was real rough. One of the guys here was, we were just kind of chatting about the project and he thought one would look cool, the real coarse surf finish on it. Um, so we went ahead and ran one like that. And then the other three that I ran was a five thousandths per rev, a three thousandths, and then a one and a half thousandths per revolution. And then when it's all wrapped up, here's the egg, here's it all finished up and not done. And uh, now I just get to go hide one of these for my kids to find. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that project. Um, we definitely had some fun making it. 
Uh, we got a cool little part when we're all finished with it. We worked through a bunch of problems. We're able to resolve those and um, you know, still make a good part. Um, learn a few good lessons with uh, stainless steel and threads and um, you know, definitely enjoyed the whole process. So thanks for watching. Uh, check out other YouTube videos here and please subscribe to our YouTube channel here.